Hello everybody and welcome back to another video. Now in today's episode, we're going to be revisiting Blue Maxima's Flashpoint. Yeah, I don't know exactly what's going on with the image up there, but yes, Flashpoint. This is the awesome archival project that we first took a look at back at the end of 2020 when Adobe officially killed off support for Adobe Flash Player. And yeah, if you haven't heard the news, Flash Player has reached its end of life. And a couple of days ago, at least when I'm recording this on January 12th, Adobe began blocking all Flash content from even running. So you're not going to be able to use Flash Player by itself anymore to play all those old Flash games and animations that were hosted on all those different websites back many years ago. But if you still want to enjoy Flash content, Flashpoint is one of the ways you can do it. And in that video, we took a look at the Windows side of things and how you can download this program that allows you to play any of the almost 80,000 Flash games and animations that they have archived. But today we're going to be touching on the Linux side of things because, uh, and I actually stated this incorrectly in the original video, I said there was only a Windows version of Flashpoint. And uh, that's actually not correct. There are Mac and Linux releases of Flashpoint. They're just in an experimental phase right now. And the developers themselves say right here that Windows is the primary target of Flashpoint. So they recommend that if you're running Mac OS or Linux and you want to use Flashpoint, they say that the best way to do that is to create a VM and install Windows in that virtual machine and then install Flashpoint that way. But I know not everyone's going to want to do that. And if you're willing to go through a couple of more steps, there is a way to get Flashpoint up and running on Mac OS and Linux. But keep in mind, this is all currently experimental. So we're going to be touching on the Linux side of things today. As you can see, we're in a Ubuntu Linux virtual machine. So if you go to the download page and click on that Linux link right here, it takes you over to the wiki page. There's an article here on the wiki that talks about uh, what you're going to have to do to get Flashpoint working on Linux. Now, as I said, there are a couple of more steps. It's not as simple as the Windows version where you just have to literally download this one file, install the application, and you're good to go. You're going to have to do a couple of more things, but it's honestly not that difficult. So first thing that you're going to have to know is there are currently two different ways to get Flashpoint on Linux. And the first one here applies only to Debian and Ubuntu. Now, I'm willing to take a guess that this would work on other Debian-based Linux distros because Ubuntu is a Debian-based Linux distro. They just specifically say Debian and Ubuntu right here. So if you'd like to try this method on another Debian-based Linux distro, feel free to do so. Now, I actually had a bit of difficulty getting Flashpoint to work properly on Debian Linux, but you can obviously try that out and your mileage may vary. But if you're not using Debian or Ubuntu or even a Debian-based distro, there there is this standalone package option that you can go with here. And this is a little bit more, I mean, there are even more steps to this than there are with this method up here, because you have to install PHP and the 32-bit version of Wine, which allows you to run some Windows applications on Linux. So you have to install these first yourself before you are able to install Flashpoint through this package here. And they have it all written out here if you want to go with this method. But again, we're going to touch on the first option right here today. So the first thing you want to do is click on the download link right here and uh, click here to download. We've already got this downloaded up here, as you can see. So we're going to open it up and you want to extract the archive. So open it up, click on extract, and we're going to extract this to our downloads. That's fine with me. So we'll click on extract and we'll let the archive manager do its thing. Now, once it extracts, we're going to click on show the files. Now, Flashpoint's developers, if we go back to the page here, and again, they have this entire process written out here. If you want to just follow along with this, you can do that, but they actually recommend uh, installing this through the terminal. Now you can just double click on the .deb file and just launch it that way, but they recommend doing it through the terminal so you can see the output and see the installation process yourself. So we're going to do just that. I'm going to open up terminal here and we're going to change to our downloads. And if we do ls, you see we've got flashpoint infinity with the version number and all that .deb. So what we're going to do is type in sudo apt install and then we're going to type period slash and start to type flashpoint, hit tab, hit enter, enter our root password or our user password. And once this comes up, it's gonna show you all of the packages that it has to install. 
Uh, as you can see, there is a lot of them. So we're going to click Y or press Y and hit enter. And there we go. It's just finished downloading and installing everything. Now, the nice thing about this, as I said earlier, this one package here contains everything that you need if you end up going with the Debian slash Ubuntu specific method here. So this is a fresh install of Ubuntu. I don't have Wine installed, but this does rely on Wine. And you can see here that uh, this will install it. You can see processing triggers for Wine right here. So uh, once you've run that command it you know it installs everything for you we're going to close out a terminal and we're going to go to our applications view here and you see we've got a new application called flashpoint with the icon right there so there it is we're going to open it up and there are a couple more things we have to do before we can start launching flash games and animations the first thing is it'll come up with this message right here that says you must install the upgrade on the home screen before being able to use the launcher do you wish to do this now we're going to say yes and now it's going to say the Flashpoint folder is not set or is invalid. We're going to say, yes, we want to choose a folder. I'm just going to put it in my home directory in the documents folder, and we're going to make a new folder and just call it Flashpoints. And so we're in that folder right now. This is where it's going to store all of its files and all of the Flash games and animations that it downloads. So if you want to put this on a secondary hard drive or something like that, make sure you do that. So I'm going to choose this folder and click OK. And it's going to just verify here. Future upgrades will also install here. Is this correct? Yes. And now it's going to download the rest of the files that it needs. Because if we go over to browse here, there's going to be nothing in here right now. So that's what it has to download right now. So we're going to let it do that. And there we go. It has finished installing that update. So now it's going to ask us to restart the program. So we'll say yes. And once it restarts here, I want to point out one of the things that I've noticed, uh, one of the little bugs here. And that is once it loads up here, it will still say right here under upgrades that there is a download for required files for Flashpoint add support for Flash games. So this will just stay here as far as I can tell. But uh, once you download and install it one time and it prompts you to restart the program and it restarts and you go to games here and you see a list of games, uh, that's your indication that it has installed successfully. So now what I can do is do a search for a Flash game. We'll do block source again. So we'll do a search for block source. And here it is right here. Now, unlike the Windows version, if you click on a game listing, there's not going to be a play button over here. And, and at first, when I saw this, I thought something was wrong. But you have to actually double click on the game for it to launch. And you'll see Wine's going to come up here. The first time you launch any of these Flash games with Flashpoint, it will come up with that Wine window because it has to configure some settings because these actually run through Wine. Let me just turn the volume down here. So you can see that wine is the name of the application that's running but it works totally fine i mean here it is this is block source so we can start a new game we can skip instructions we can make the window larger again and uh, oh, that's not what i wanted to do but yeah so here it is running on linux and just like in the windows release of flashpoint once you download one of these games and it's stored locally on your hard disk you can disconnect from the internet so let's say i want to uh, turn off my wired connection and I can try to launch block source again, and it will work totally fine because the uh, file is stored locally. So uh, that is, and you can see if I try to go to miniclip.com by clicking on that, it's not gonna go anywhere because it can't find the server because we're not online. So that is really, really awesome as well. You got that same offline functionality. So we're gonna uh, reconnect to the internet here. Let's say we wanna check out Windows RG. I did a video on this as well. Windows RG and Windows XP 19.914. Some of those parody Windows Flash programs from the early 2000s. It was pretty fun to take a look at. You can check out that video up in the cards. But uh, yeah, here it is. Here's Windows RG in all of its glory, man. Ah, uh, there it is, guys. So yeah, I mean, you can spend, I mean, honestly, you can spend a lot of time going through here and exploring all of this stuff, but that is how simple it is, guys. Honestly, it's not as complex as you might think. It just takes a little bit of extra time. There's a couple of extra steps involved, but that's all you have to do to get Flashpoint running on Ubuntu Linux. So guys, hopefully you enjoyed this episode. If you did, definitely be sure to give it a thumbs up. Be sure to get subscribed down below and turn on those channel notifications if you haven't already to get notified whenever I upload a new video, which I do multiple times every single week on this channel. And as always, guys, I want to thank you all so much for watching, and I will see you in the next video.